Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to get ready to do it for n segments as n goes to infinity. In order to make that easier to work, we're going to find the moment of inertia using numerical methods by assuming now that the center of mass of each segment, so now we have eight segments, is at the end of the segment instead of at the middle of the segment. Well, that will cause us to have a moment of inertia a little bit bigger than what we'd expect. And then as we increase the segments, then the number is going to convert to the right from above instead of from below the way we did it on the previous example. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the moment of inertia for eight segments, but now with the center mass at the end of the segment instead of at the middle of the segment. So we can say that the moment of inertia I is going to be approximately equal to the sum of I1 plus I2, and so all eight segments. So now we find the moment of inertia of each segment, so that's approximately equal to, now we're going to have each segment having one eight the mass, m over eight, multiplied times the distance to that, that is one eight of the L, so that would be L over eight, and we have to square that. And that would be for the first segment plus m over eight, times 2L over 8 quantity squared. squared. And you can see why we want to do it this way, because we have a much better segmentation and ways to summarize it when we have n segments. You'll see that coming up next. So we'll continue this, plus M over 8. Finally, plus M over L times 8L over 8 quantity squared. So you can see now that it's very easy to find the pattern no matter how many segments you have. And then you can sum them all up. So we can then say that this is approximately equal to, we can factor out an m over 8 for all of them. m over 8 times, now we can, now we can add up all the numerics squared. So that would be, uh, well actually, uh, let's see, no, it's not m over l, it's m over 8. So we factor out an m over 8. And matter of fact, I can do better than that. Let's start over again. I think a better way to do that would be we have 8 squared times 8. That's 64 times 8, which is uh, 5 twelfths. 8 times 8 times 8. Yep, that would be 5 twelfths. So we have m divided by 512. And we can have l squared like this times. Now we're going to add up 1 squared plus 2 squared plus like this. So what we did was we factored out an L squared, an M, and an 8 cubed in the denominator, which is 512. And now we have to add up all those and divide by 512. So that would be uh, 1, that would be, okay, so 1, oop, 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 plus 49 plus 64 equals Divide that by 512, and notice in this case, 3984. So that's approximately equal to 0 0.3984 ml squared. So just like we predicted, the value we got was higher than what we want to have because we picked the, we picked the center mass of each, of each segment at the end instead of at the middle. Of course, with few segments like 8, our number is going to be off by quite a bit. That's rel relatively close. But as we increase the segments, in the end, as n goes to infinity, that's no longer going to make any difference, and we'll get the exact value. Now we're all set up to do the case for n as n goes to infinity, and now we'll find the exact moment of inertia using numerical methods. And that is how it's done.